Hi, I'm Jean Lima, editor of The Economy, and this is Frontline. Today I'm speaking to Emilien Cevenini, Vice President for Power Sales and Business Development, EMEA, for Vertiv. Um, Emilien, thanks a lot for talking to me. Thank you. Are we having a crisis in terms of energy in the data center space? Well, definitely, yes. Um, in, in some areas where we have a big upscale scale data centers, we actually see an energy constraint. So in, in some sites and some locations, we are actually short of energy. So this is uh, restraining the, the, the development investments of big data center guys. This is, this is happening in specific areas, but more in general, uh, all data center operators have a challenge with the, in reducing their energy costs. And uh, 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 Vertiv as a company using uh, the, the new opportunities offered by the battery energy storage, uh, we are helping our customer either to provide more power where they are short of power, but more in general to provide, to modify their power consumption in order to optimize their cost. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, with the, with the goal of uh, reducing the cost of energy for our data center customers. Mm -hmm. But how would you incentivize companies, data center companies, to use green energy um, sources? Uh, in, in this case, mm -hmm. um, well, the, the, the incentive can come from, say, um, buying, uh, let's say, our, other, our, our assets, our, our systems, our, and uh, let us operate them in order to, uh, um, uh, for them to get directly a cost saving. I'll, I'll make you an example. Uh, you can build a business case in putting a bigger energy storage, a battery energy storage in a data center, and uh, um, stop absorbing energy from the grid when the cost is peaking, resuming uh, uh, the drawing energy from the grid when the cost will fall below a certain threshold. In this case, uh, the center operator, the center owner, will immediately enjoy the cost reduction. But using the same system, uh, there is also the possibility for doing more. So selling behind the meter services mm. to the transmission system operator. And there are a lot of different services that transmission system operators are buying as a service that they can also buy behind the meter uh, from data center customer, which are big energy users. So they, they have an impact in the, in the, in the, in the landscape of uh, service providers for the grid. Mm. And then on the wider spectrum of things, so when we talk about governments and insurance companies, what is their role in this sort of place? Because we've spoken for example, before about insurance companies increasing sure. their insurance to companies that don't follow green policies. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is the government's and insurance uh, well, role here? Government has a key mm -hmm. role uh, because they are issuing regulations mm -hmm. which can favor this or uh, restrain this. Uh, so far in a country like UK, I would say that the government has been very open uh, to facilitate uh, regulation policies which will empower the behind the meter users to actually be able to deliver those services. In terms of insurance companies, it's, it's about uh, liabilities. So our data center customers are certainly looking for uh, getting, uh, say, cost saving and or new revenues from additional services without having the full liability uh, of those additional services. We as Vertiv and as, as, as a system providers are also um, say promoting the use of platforms uh, which will uh, provide the service, have the customer to get the benefit but with a limited liability because we will take part of the liability. So this should help also in our data center customers not to have increased cost in terms of insurances due to increased risk and so on. So we, we are not only aimed in selling a system which will do something for the customer, but we want also to operate it or to provide it as a service, not necessarily as a, as a, as a, as a capex. But we've recently seen some statistics that suggest that data centers will be consuming about 3% of the world's yes. um, power. Yes. Um, is the industry doing enough for itself to save it from using 3%? Do we want to get to those 3% or can we curb that at some point? Um, are we doing enough? I think that we, we can do much more. Mm. Uh, we can do much more, and uh, in, uh, in, in some cases, we could also offer, uh, a, a, as, as energy management provider, let's say, alternatives to the grid itself. So other ways of, of powering data centers. Mm. Uh, this has <coughs> been ahead of times, uh, but I think that we will also see data centers uh, willing to provide uh, and power data centers with alternative uh, um, uh, fuels or with alternative sources. So actually, uh, in terms of uh, total absorption, I think that we will grow much more than that 3%, but not necessarily entirely from the grids.
we could also implement new schemes of providing energy to the data centers. Mm, okay. And what sort of new revenue streams can you take out of the data center? Yes. Uh, from using pol uh, green policies, for example. Yes. But for example, uh, using green policies, but also, uh, well, usually green policies have an impact on, on, on the profit and loss on the balance sheet of the data center, providing capital allowance uh, on depreciation, etc., which have been very successful. But now, uh, also, the data center with the behind the meter system can really subscribe a service with the national grid of the case, sell a service which could be frequency regulation, uh, which at the end of the day physically is the exchange of active power, using the, the battery storage. So they are actually selling a service. So when I, when, I, when I refer to additional revenues, it is really additional revenues. The data centers operators could have directly a contract with the trans transmission system operator like the national grid and get the money for the service, but they will also get full liability for the service. Or we could deal with our customers, uh, provide them the equipment and the op operating system. We deal with the national grid and we, we are paid by the national grid for the service and we reward the data center owner for the big higher use, higher cycling of their assets. So this is actually all about uh, cost saving cost in terms of peak shaving, but also extra revenues coming from service contracts with the grid uh, system operators. Another big talk in the industry at the moment is also transforming parts of the data center into a sort of energy storing house, uh, storing energy in the data center. Exactly. What is that all about? Uh, the old, uh, well, I mean, uh, first of all, let's not forget the, the primary mission of the data center, which is, I mean, providing, uh, enabling cloud services, enabling computers. Power, yeah. uh, it, it is, well, in, in, to provide the correct resilience to a data center, you must have an energy storage. Every data center today has an energy storage, being a thermal energy storage for the conditioning or power energy storage, battery energy storage. If you um, expand the capacity, of that battery storage, then you can dedicate a part of energy for the same mission, which is the primary mission. In any case, protect the load, but use the excess power to develop other services, which could be capacity market. So when the grid need a, a helping hand in terms of power, instead of turning on another gas fire station, they ask the data center to backfeed part of the excess power back into the grid. So in a city, of Virginia, if there's a notice from the grid, you can use the data center to power the city That is for a while. certainly That is certainly a bit extreme, but in principle, yes. If mm. uh, the data center mm. and the town are living on the same smart grid, on the same microgrid, yes, definitely yes. We can uh, switch uh, the, 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 the uh, backup equipment of the data center from uh, a grid supporting to grid forming. So they could actually provide uh, voltage back to the grid. In microgrid, this is certainly, in geographical grid, I don't see that feasible, so I, I can only see grid supporting uh, modes. Yeah. But in microgrid, why not? Okay, sounds good. Okay, Emiliano, thanks a lot for talking to me. Thank you. Um, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.